as well, which is for some people, you know, tagging into that social graph is a really, it's a really compelling proposition. And I know a lot of people are out there trying to crack kind of the Facebook, social TV, Facebook. I mean, as, as Greg said, I mean, that's where, you know, you started with Fan Candy because it's, you know, when you have whatever, 800 million users and it's like, it's, it's a very attractive way, and it get you can get viral a lot faster that way too. But it's it's a it's a it's a debate that every startup has. I mean, that's for sure. The, what so we did go on Facebook. The problem with Facebook or shortcoming of Facebook is you don't own the user. And they change I, the API every like four months. Yeah, well they gross. yeah they change the APIs <laughs> like I've changed wives. The uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it. it uh, this is the right town for me. <laughs> I tried to schedule a seven o'clock meeting with John, seven o'clock a.m., and, and his note came back to me. Didn't you read where this convention is being held? <laughs> Nobody in the world is up at seven o'clock in Las Vegas. Um, anyway, I, it, eventually, I want to own my user. I want to be able to, to reach out to them. I want to be able to communicate with them, and uh, I want to own that data, and I can't do that on Facebook. So Facebook for us has been a a springboard to other other ways to do this. And frankly, if we were starting just now, I don't know that we'd be even begin on Facebook. I think we'd go directly to to, to mobile um, and not and not do Facebook. Use Facebook Connect for social features. But so what is the second screen about most? Is it about the content most? Is it about social most? Is it about loyalty? I, I think it's about engagement. I think that's the broader term and each of those things that you just mentioned are tools to, to drive engagement. How, how do you do something that, when we look at our stream of information, one of the ways we judge ourselves is, is how engaging is it? And we look at the metrics of what are people doing with this thing? And if it's just simply passive, passive looking at, you know, tweets go by, I'm not sure we're doing the job that we want. So we look at um, social, not only are we filtering what's being said across sports uh, from authoritative sports figures, but then we do things like uh, we'll, we'll filter your uh, Facebook friends' feeds for mentions of games. Because we know that's going to provoke, you know, if your buddy says something about the game that's on from a rival, you know, he's supporting a rival team, you're going to engage. Yeah. Um, I could not agree, I mean, I could not agree with you more. I think yeah. engagement is really that word. And as the, as the media industry evolves, I mean, let's face it, we're talking second screen. So by saying second screen, we're, obviously, there's a first screen. And as the media models evolve, and everyone's been talking about integrated media and convergent media for, I don't know, how long, Ed? Like 10 years? Yep. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and eventually, it's actually going to happen. Um, and I think once it does happen, engagement, and then also how that engagement works to enhance that first screen, I think that's when, when you get the whole system working together and you can create that circle that includes broadcast and your companion and social, I think that's... That's when we're going to see the real, uh, the real kind of result, or, or, or I guess w not winner, but we're going to see, we're really going to see the power of how you can integrate all these screens together. So I think engagement yeah, is. That I think word. from a business perspective, that's the point that that you know I started off saying you want to create something really interesting for you know great simple fan experience. You want to make it engaging, but but really that's the end goal. That's the vision, right? Is that it's it's something that becomes incremental inventory for the first time. Fans have something that. It's engaging, it's tactile, so while media companies are selling against the large screen uh, broadcast in front of the fan, there's now this companion experience um, that either folks you know, like Fox are gonna leverage or uh, you know, a startup that gets a runner or one of the juggernaut internet companies that has that engaging experience it is going to create this really interesting opportunity over time, and I'm sure Vigil has a... A, a strong opinion I mean, on that. We, we've, we've jumped in, you know, headlong into this. And, you know, our brand pillars are based around um, discovery, helping you find what shows to watch, engagement, entertaining you, and enhancing the show that you are watching, but it is tied exactly to the show you're watching. And then loyalty, creating, uh, rewarding you, and creating loyalty around the content that you do view, all wrapped around with a social sort of cloud to uh, tie all of that together. Um, so it, the second screen for us is a platform and we by no means think that we're going to invent everything or uh, create everything that people want to do on the second screen. We want to be um, the distribution for these great ideas. We want to be the distribution for Fox second screen apps. We want to be the distribution for WWE second screen apps. We want to be the distribution for all of you. 
to be able to access, you know, the people that come to Viggle, audio verify that they're watching the show, check in, tell us what they're watching, and interact with the content that is provided by the content creators, the networks, and, you know, other people who are creating cool things to do with TV. So we know aggregation is very important for the first screen, um, but it's also important for the second screen. So how can you guys make your app the, the one place they tune into while they're watching a game? <laughs> Spend countless millions of dollars promoting. We're convinced media companies that you can actually enhance their broadcast, pr protect their brand investment, because we all know that audiences are fragmenting. I, you know, the, what's the common, the common percentage? What, 86% of sports fans are engaging in a second screen? During, I mean, who knows how they're, it, it's, it's, it's a, happening. It's, right. Yeah, it's and, but I mean, that's a vague number, but you know, brands and agencies are starting to realize that you know, conventional media buy is becoming a little bit less reliable because eyeballs are kind of tracking all over the place. So I mean, I think that if you can create a way to actually convince the media partners or brands that you can insulate that, that heavy investment towards sports, I mean, I think that's a, I mean, I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty significant step. I mean, it's not there yet, but I think that that that'll be a pretty good step. To you know, you need the behemoth behind you, mm. or you need twenty million dollars to market yourself. Mm. You know, it's hard to go viral. It's hard to become an Instagram. You know, I mean, if it was easy, well, you know, everyone would be doing it. It's true, but you know, our our view is in you know, so Vigo as a platform or SportStream as uh, a stream of information. You know, as a, a very tactical thing. You know, we looked at the stream as a very modern format. People are very used to, you know, Twitter or Facebook timelines um, or, or check, checking Instagram photos, that that was something that people are becoming more and more accustomed to. And it affords a real opportunity to, to aggregate content and to bring it from different places and, and make it cohesive. Um, but to your earlier question, you know, about the importance of social, you know, again, it you get commentary there that people want to engage, but I would encourage people, as you think about the design of your product, you know, there's some things about, every time you get somebody inside of your product, what are you doing to get them to tell people outside of your product about it, without being spammy or, or just, you know, auto-posting to Facebook, those sorts of things. I think that's, I think that's done. I think Facebook is doing a lot of things to, to dampen uh, discovery of, of apps that are doing that. So, it's really more about authentic things um, that your, your users are doing that they want to share, you know, whether it's a fantasy win or some transaction that they want to comment on. Like, what are the ways you can get people to touch people outside of your experience to draw, to draw new people in? Um, it's something I think you want to think really seriously about as, as you're doing design for your, for your app. When we talk about aggregating users, we use a figure of 3 to $5 per user. So aggregating users uh, gets very expensive very quickly. If any of you are talking to venture capital, what they're going to say to you really quickly is, how do you scale, how do you monetize, and how do you aggregate users? They're very interested, obviously, in what your user base is. So our approach has been um, to try to find partners in one of three areas, which is with a league or teams, uh, with media companies or with sponsors and let them, for all intents and purposes, do the heavy lifting. Uh, if we were able to, Ed comes from Fox, if we were able to do a, a, a something with Fox, we would hope that they would be the promoter, that, that would, they would take, well, they had 40 million viewers of your game last weekend, uh, that they could reach out to those 40 million viewers and promote us. If we were trying to do that ourselves, the, the price tag obviously is uh, impossible. So I, I don't see how we, our game, Fan Candy, can possibly uh, reach the uh, aggregated user base that we would need without either a media partner, a league partner, a team partner, uh, or um, uh, a sponsor. Absolutely, you, you, need to, you need to create partnerships with, especially given that all of us are talking about fantasy sports, and you need to create partnerships with the networks. Um, if you want to create a second screen, that means you need to be on the first screen, marketing on the first screen. Obviously, that's expensive. So you need to create uh, awareness um, by working with the networks, getting lower thirds, snipes, promotional outreach. I mean, one of the ways that we've been able to grow is we have a partnership with DirecTV. For all intents and purposes, we are DirecTV's loyalty program. Um, they're on, they you know, have a budget of $18 million this year to market Viggle. Um, and they're on TV with commercials on the Red Zone channel, and that's our primary you know, way of distribution right now. I think 
that's you have to be on TV.